Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G27 and welcome to the video. In this episode, it's going to be a little bit special today. Uh, this is going to be a different episode than I usually do. This is not really a money grind race. Instead, this is more of a tutorial video of how to make your own NASCAR race or your own NASCAR racing league. Um, now, there's plenty of ways of going with this, uh, but I had a comment on my last video and somebody would like to see my own intake of how to form your own NASCAR settings slash race or league. So this is what that episode is going to be about. So without no further ado, let's get started. So the main best car to do this is going to be at Brand Central. It's going to be the Nissan Spec Aero R. Um, it's going to be the grade four race car as we scroll over here. Here it is right here. Um, it's going to cost you about 350,000 credits. Um, so let's say if you want to make your own AI event like I, I have done in the past if you want to buy 20 of them it's gonna cost you a pretty good bit of credits or if you wanted to have your own personal car and let your other friends buy their own personal cars that that can happen too um, yeah it's gonna cost you about 350,000 credits uh, so just get a win at Le Mans that's what I recommend doing and you should easily get this car um, now you might be asking yourself well, how can this car be a good car to use since it's got a very strange big giant wing on the back. Well, that's a good question. So let's now fast forward to deliveries. So if we go to showcase tent, um, make sure you check the box on your current car, which is the Aero Spec R, and let's type in NASCAR real quick. And you'll just see there's a huge amounts of pages. So right now we're looking at 28 different pages of results. And you can just see deliveries or paint schemes, whatever you may call them. There's a tons and tons of different results. High quality deliveries, as you see here as well. So basically, any driver you can think of, either from this generation or drivers from the early to the mid-2000s, to mid or even all the way back in the 90s. Um, even some really good custom-made deliveries too. I mean, there's a lot of deliveries you can download and, you know, set up your own league, of course, by said, either between yourself and the AI opponents, or you can just have your own little private league, and you can just tell someone, hey, here's the numbers that you can use for that particular number, and they can just pick whatever driver they want, unless you have your own criteria and rules. So, just in case, let's say if you want to do your own 20 car group, which I've done in the past in my channel a long time ago. Here's this 03 Kevin Harvick Red Good Wrench livery. I think that he drove this car in the 2003 but shootout. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the paint job he drove for that race. So, just to save some time, what you're going to do is hit collect, and just like that, you're good. Um, that way, you can step to your next driver and just keep going. Um, so, let's say for the next driver, you want, you know, I don't know, just anyone you can think of down the list. Um, it doesn't have to be anybody from that particular same year. It could be, you know, a driver from today's era or, you know, further back. Let's say you want Jeff Gordon's 2002 livery. Go ahead and hit collection and, you know, just keep going until you're really satisfied. Until you, you hit that number of drivers you want for your, uh, your own private league for yourself. Or you can just, like I said tell your friends or whoever you want to be in your league here's what you need to choose for and you can also if you want to mix it up and just have different liveries so here's Martin Truex Taco Bell if you want to download that livery you can just add to your collection uh, just in case if you want to build your own 20 cars this will help you a lot too uh, but it's kind of painful um, if you do your own 20 drivers because then you have to go through deliveries and then after that you have to match up every sin single identical um, settings on the cars as well. So here's Ricky Bud's paint job. If you want to download it, you can. Or Mark Martin's Army car. Um, just click on it, hit collection. Here's another, our last page right here. Uh, so let's say if you want a today's driver, like here's Carl Larson. If you want to have him in your list, then go ahead. Um, it's just up to you as the individual that you want to have for your driver if you're playing it have your own league for yourself versus 19 different AI drivers um, if you want to go that route but if you want to have your own league 
where you yourself can have your own livery and everybody else just buy their own cars and buy their own or collect their own liveries uh, that can work too. So for our last sheet, um, as you can see, like I mentioned before, there's some really, really good liveries too that you can easily download. And they're pretty accurate too of what the description says too, which is really good. Uh, very easy to notice too. Uh, so like for your ex last example, um, if you want to have in your race the Unhearted Oreo cookie car that he drove for the his last bush shootout clash, uh, then go ahead and add it to your collected. Just like that. And then for your final example, if you want Jimmy Spencer's Kmart Shrek car, then you can go ahead and add that to, to your uh, uh, you know league as well if you want to do your, your own 20 plus AI drivers plus yourself. So that's how you do that. Uh, now what I recommend doing is if you want to fine tune your cars, just go to time trial. We're going to go to Daytona International Raceway, which is a very good reliable racetrack for these cars because they really do have that NASCAR feel to it. Now on board, I'm driving Kyle Petty's 1997 Hot Wheels car. And actually I have the setup for this car, so after this hot lap or practice lap, I'll be able to show you guys basically um, the setup for the car. So I'm just going to let you guys watch this lap, just see how the car reacts to the turns and see how fast it goes and I'll see you when we get to the settings sheet. So overall, that was a pretty good lap time of 46.395. Now here's the full list I have for the car. And usually, as you see on top of the list, it says Daytona. Um, usually, you as a person, if you want to have your own tires, so tell the league, hey, we want to use racing softs, you can. Or racing hards, mediums, whatever it might be. Um, for this car, I have racing hards. Um, it's up to you as the owner of what you guys want to do. Uh, for your suspension, um, actually does matter what you have so for this package I have it set to as low as it possibly can which is good for the stock engine package um, but you see I didn't really do anything with suspension uh, same thing for differential I really didn't, didn't do anything with it either I kept it 10 30 and 20 uh, for a downforce for it being Daytona for it being as hot super speedway I had it both the front and the rear set as low as it possibly could go uh, because you know there's you don't have to brake it's just full throttle and you just turn the, the wheel to the left there's no really need to add down force to the car um, so for ECU of course you're going to keep it at 100% because it is a super speedway and you do need as much speed as possible um, even if you're by yourself you just need as much speed as possible for fully customizing racing transmission I have it all the way jacked up to 460 as the top speed and the reason why is because um, you as a driver you do have control your gears but mainly this is for the AI because usually the AI would actually shift to fifth gear when I tried these runs and I really wanted to make sure and control the gearing where they didn't, there was no need for them to shift to fifth gear so sixth gear and fifth gear those two gears are basically useless so you don't have to use them um, now the reason why I have fourth gear spinning your last gear is because I'm more of that guy that's usually used to the older days, like the late 90s, early 2000 kind of builds. Um, so that's why I allowed the car to go up to fourth gear, and that being that. Um, now you might want to do fifth gear; it's up to you. Uh, but I would rather have it being the old school way and just having it good old solid four gears. That's what I. Wanted to do, wanted to build it that way, uh, so that's why I have it the top speed being fourth gear about 192, 193, which I actually felt comfortable about because the car actually did felt really good and very stable. Uh, now, for your last upgrade for the engine is the medium RPM turbocharger, and that's if you have the stocked engine. Um, but yeah, it's a really good solid package uh, to use for the super speedway. 
And actually, I also have a Suzuka uh, build as well. Now, the difference between this and Daytona is you'll see a huge difference. So as we swing over here, uh, you can see the negative camber angle and the toe angle. I have it set to zero. Uh, flat. Uh, I didn't do anything different on the right height or the anti rub bar, the damping ratio, or natural fr frequency. I kept it as is. I just adjusted the toe angle and then that camber. Now for the initial torque and acceleration. Um, after seeing this, um, it'll probably be better if you actually lower it, not have it as 60, but I say about probably 15 for acceleration and 5 for initial torque or 10. And then for braking, uh, I probably would recommend at least 20 or 25. That's what I recommend doing uh, for the car. Um, as you see for the downforce, I have it set up to maximum for both the front and for the rear because this is a road course uh, track, not a speedway. Well, the rear almost has full downforce, but it's 450. So it actually does have a good bit of rear downforce. Um, but after that, I have the fully customized racing set to 340. I think for this particular build, I was able to have the cars run six gears, I believe. Uh, that was the build. If not six gears, at least five gears. I could be wrong about that. Um, it's because it's been a long time since I actually tested this build out at Suzuka itself. But there's the gear ratio if you're just curious to see what it's like. And of course, still with the medium premium turbocharger. But we're going to keep it at Daytona uh, because... You know, I just love the Daytona setup. But let's say if you have the car swapped, I just see so right there. Um, if you either won the engine or you bought the engine package yourself, here is the build I have that's updated. If you have the swapped engine in your car, and as you can see, we're pushing way over 1,032 horsepower. So the, we got racing softs as our tired compound, or whatever you guys decide to do for your compounds is up to you. For the ride height, it's a little bit different. You see, I got it set to 92 for the rear and 80 for the front. Uh, the anti roll bar is set to 90, and pretty much everything else is pretty much as is on the default setting. Besides the negative camber and the tail angle is set to zero flat. Um, downforce, of course, is as low as possibly can go because it is a super speedway race. And it go all the way down to our transmission, and you see it's 570. Um, and as you guys can see, just looking at the grid, it will reach the fourth gear. Um, so that way the AI doesn't have to change the fifth gear. And I have the ultimate high RPM turbocharger in this car. Now, if you don't have this, don't worry about it. Um, just aim for high RPM turbocharger if you don't have uh, if you don't have the part or if you can't buy it because you're not level 50 yet uh, then I would just, just strive for high uh, basically everything I just seen on the grid is what you're going to get for your car and that's going to be it so what I'm going to quickly show you is quick uh, race re settings for this so for this quick race I'm going to do 10 laps it's going to be nine cars for this race including myself um, I'll be starting all the way back in 8th place. Uh, this is going to be a rolling start type of start. Uh, about 51 feet uh, per car for distance. The boost is going to be set to strong so that everybody can stay close together. The slipstream is going to be strong as well so that way they can really get some good speed off the slipstream. Mechanical damage is going to be set to none. Tire wear is going to be 3. Fuel consumption is 2. Um, the speed of the fuel refueling map is up to you. Um, the weather, I'm going to have it set to nighttime for this particular tryout race. And that's mainly it for the race. Uh, as long as you have all the cars set up the same setup as your car, uh, then you're good to go. So, here we are for this little tryout race. We, of course, are racing Chase Elliott's 2023 Mother's Day throwback paint scheme uh, from Darlington from last year. I really liked how it turned out. Um, even though I couldn't really add the decal for the rear bumper, I think it still turned out pretty well. Uh, but as you can see, we have some of the older drivers in this list. Uh, so let's go ahead and show who's is who. So the leader is Dell Jr. Um, unfortunately, I got him driving the X side 99 rather than the number 8 or 88. Michael Watrop in his old Napa car. Uh, the Tony Stewart in his old Home Depot car. Harvick in his 2002 livery. Then we have a fifth place. Mike Skinner driving Ricky Brett's 2002 car. And then, of course, behind him is Jeff Gordon driving, I believe it's his 2004 paint scheme from the Brick Card 400. Uh, and then, right behind him, you can see us in Chase Elliott's paint scheme from Darlington of 2023. And then, right behind us is Jimmy Johnson from his 2006 paint job, I believe. And then, 
running up the last plate is Elliot Seller that's driving Bell Jarrett's 2002 UPS livery. So I kind of have the names kind of mixed up. Um, I didn't really have enough time to really fix the names, who was who in which car. Um, so don't let the names throw you off. Just look at the cars and see what they're doing. Uh, now this particular package, it is very, very quick. As you can see here, as we cross the line for Johnson, he did about 40 seconds around the track, which is very quick. A lot faster than the other package if you had the engine set to stocks. And you can see we're already in lap 3, just about finishing up turn 1. So this package is very quick. Uh, so if you do decide to do this package, just make sure and just be careful. You and your fellow competitors, if, you ha if you're going to do it with other IRL drivers, then be careful. Um, I tried my best to make sure it felt smooth and very drivable, which it really is. Um, I did notice that AI were having trouble with it earlier, uh, so that's why I made some changes to the ride height and to the natural frequency. That way it would be a little bit more smoother in the corners and make sure that whenever they were close to somebody, that they actually would be able to still drive close by behind someone's rear bumper rather than just losing control because of dirty air. Uh, because now dirty air is now a thing in the game. But as you can see, we're already halfway to lap 4, so this is a very, very quick race. Um, but it's very competitive, we're all still together, we're still, you know, very close racing. And with this package, if you do decide to run it, you'll see a huge difference. Especially when you get a good slipstream boost from somebody, you can really, really tell the huge speed difference. Uh, so just to watch out for that. So if you're curious to see how fast we're going, we're going about 220 miles per hour. Um, Averagely in the main straights and the corners is about the, the high 220 teens But you can see we're just about close to 230 as we about to approach turn 3 um, So this is a very quick build around the track um, a lot faster than if you would have this Car having the, the stock engine with the medium RPM turbocharger But you can see the little bit of puffs of smoke letting you know that somebody's ramming somebody in the back um, but like I said before, the slipstream is huge as we're going to get dragged into the wall. And it's crazy to see that on one lap, you could be, you know, third place and then you could be moved all the way back in the pack. Or it could be vice versa. You might be almost last place and you could probably be yourself in the lead. So watch the 28 car as we'll see here. Again, very nice slipstream from us. He's going to pull to the inside and almost gets himself or he's about to actually move to P2 and passing the 20 car. Uh, so like I said, the surf stream is unbelievably strong if you have it set to strong uh, with this package. And it's pretty fun uh, having it set to strong because you just shoot out like a rocket. You just come out of nowhere. Um, now there is one thing to look out for is to make sure that you stay in your line and not go any deeper. So we're going to see Harvick as he's going to hit the wall. It spins out. And if you guys are curious to see what happened, uh, to the 29. Let's take a little look back and see what happens. So he's got some air from the 15, which might affect the car. You can see he just barely right there hit the apron, overcorrected, and then you see right there spins out and just loses control. So just be careful with this particular build. It is quick, feels good, but still delicate. Um, so let's fast forward now. Later in the lap, we now have the 88 leading the race, 28 in second place. We're right there battling with the 28 for second spot. But you can see, we're all still together. So this is a very close, compact race. Uh, pretty fun. You just gotta keep uh, a lookout for the drivers because you never may know who's gonna pop out out of nowhere uh, with the slipstream. Now we got the 15 moving to P2. But you'll see right back here, especially right this back distance, you can see some of the cars that are further back. Look at the 48 and 20. They just really gained a lot of time on the 15. And look at turn three. They're right there with us. As a matter of fact, we're actually going to get shoved out of the way from the 48. Right in the middle of turn 3, we're actually going to make some good contact right here. Right there. Hit us in the wall. We're going to hit him back. Um, so as we approach with two laps to go, the race is about to finish up. So this is actually becoming a very entertaining, exciting finish to this race. Uh, now, I'm the only driver with soft tires. And at this point, my tires were in pretty rough shape. Uh, everybody else was on hards, and it looks like if you decide to do this package, it looks like hards might be the best tire to choice if you have tire wear set on. But look at the 28. 28 comes out of nowhere, shoots like a rocket, and is going to make a bold move and take the lead in this race as we're about to approach the last lap. 
So as we're about to approach the last lap, we're going to pass the 88, moving us to P2 and see if we can get ourselves a good run off the corner, if not set ourselves up for a pass for the last turn of the last lap of the race. So here we are, we can move on the outside, then we're going to cut back down, but we make contact with the 88, the 88 spins us out, and just like that, we're out of the contention, and with that happening, everybody slows up. The 28 now has a huge lead, but don't forget, there is a huge boost for the slipstream. So, the 48 is coming down, charging quickly, but the question is, will the 48 have enough time and track to get to the 28? So as we exit the corner, 48 is getting closer and closer as there's a battle for 7th place, but it looks like the 28 is going to hold off the 48 and will take the win at this short race. But other than that, it was a very fun and entertaining race even though we came in P8. But other than that, hopefully this field will help you out to figure out how to set up a NASCAR race uh, setup. So that was a really good run with those new swapped engine builds uh, for the Aero Spec R, which I really would love to you know, make some more NASCAR videos with those swaps um, if I have enough time to do so. But yeah, hopefully this educational video will be a big up to you. Just in case if you ever decide to do a NASCAR league or, you know, NASCAR content uh, that you can share on your own YouTube channel or on Facebook, um, which is a lot of fun. So hopefully that will help you out. You will get an understanding of how it all works and stuff of the cars and the particular setups. So if you guys are, in are very interested to see what the cars will drive with the older stock engines, here is a clip I made from an old shootout video right about there. If you want to check that video out, um, you're more welcome to do so. Hopefully that video will be you know, educational as well to see what the cars can do in that video. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day or night, whoever it might be, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.